Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is my assistant Julie Oliver. This is just a short video about Omicron and what we know and what we don't know. And at the moment there is a lot more that we don't know. But let's go back to the science and look at what we do know. This figure comes from covariance.org and it lists all the known mutations of the Omicron variant, which is also known as B11529. There are 36 mutations in the spike protein and 26 in other parts of the virus. So a lot of mutations. Some of the mutations have been seen before in other variants, but some are new. Amongst mutations in the spike protein, some are in the part of the virus that binds to ACE2 and some are at urine cleavage sites. Both ACE2 binding and furin cleavage are necessary for viral entry into cells. So these mutations could potentially make it easier for the virus to enter cells and therefore increase infectivity and transmissibility. But we don't know for sure. There are also a few amino acids that have been deleted. One of them is targeted by a particular PCR test. So if this sequence is missing from the PCR test results, it could be used as a proxy to quickly see if a positive case has the Omicron variant. Of course, you'd have to still do full genomic sequencing to confirm this, but it gives you an idea quick. So in terms of the science, that's about all we definitely know at the moment. However, we will be getting more information in the coming weeks. So this video probably won't age well. There is some speculation that the new variant could evade antibodies from previous infections or vaccines. This is certainly possible, although it would be unlikely to be complete evasion and you would also still be protected against serious disease by memory B and T cells. And if you wanna know more about the different roles of antibodies, memory B and T cells, please see my video about booster doses. The good news is if it turns out that there is significant drop off in neutralizing antibodies with the vaccines, we should be able to have new vaccines ready in about 100 days. There is also some evidence that this variant is more transmissible than the Delta variant, but there really isn't enough data yet to say for sure. That being said, it's better to wear it on the side of caution and assume that it is until we know more. Omicron is now the fifth variant to be classified as a variant of concern by the World Health Organization. The others are Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and the infamous Delta. Of these, Alpha and Delta spread widely, but Beta and Gamma, not so much. So we'll have to see what happens with Omicron. It is starting to show up in multiple countries, but so far there haven't been many cases outside of Southern Africa. There have been two cases actually just picked up today in Australia where I'm from, but they're actually in hotel quarantine, so they're not spreading anywhere in Australia at the moment. Of course, whether it starts to spread around the world or not, we don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and see. While we're talking about the World Health Organization, apparently the reason they call the new variant Omicron and not new or Z, which were the next in line, is because they didn't want new NU to be confused with new NEW. And Z, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, is a popular surname. And no one wants to be named after virus. Just ask Corona Beer or Delta Airlines. There have also been some reports that Omicron causes milder symptoms. If this is true, it is great, but I don't think there are really enough cases yet to say for sure. So just to summarize on Omicron, Although there is a lot of speculation, there is a lot we really don't know yet, but this should change soon. We should exercise caution until we know more, but we shouldn't panic. In the meantime, if you're not vaccinated, now is probably a good time to do it or to get boosted if you're eligible. Finally, I'd like to draw your attention to something Julie and I saw today when we were on our morning walk. It appears there may be a giant house-eating virus infecting houses in Sydney. So far, it appears to have only infected one house, but that could change. No mention of it yet in the media. Back to the science and the serious stuff. If you'd like to know more about the technical details of the new variant, I've provided some links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. 
Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to see more videos about the science in the future, please hit the subscribe button.